Now, joining me in the studio at the moment, we have one of Ross Gray's, well, we call him one of our best known citizens. That's Jack Miney, and I don't think that I am capable of even talking to Jack, but I have a man in the studio who I'm told is. That's Christy Maher, so Christy, I leave it all to you. Well, we have here with me uh, Jack Miney. You're very welcome, Jack, to... Uh Pat Show and Ross Gray Radio. Sergeant John Miney, we all call you Jack. Yes. Sergeant of the Irish Guards and the last remaining Irish VC of the 1418 Moor. Now, first of all, I'll begin by asking you, what age are you, Jack? I'll be 83 next January. And <coughs> where, where were you born? I was born in Rat Downey, the 8th of January, 1895. And can you tell us something about your early life? What you well, uh, when I, we got very little school in that time. We had a big family, and uh, we had to go out and work. And uh, I worked with a local farmer until the war broke out in 1914. And I still carried on the work. And in January 1915, myself and a chap the name of Nick Tobin, we said we'd chuck in and join the army. Well, now, were any of your family traditionally associated no, with No, 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 no. Your father or grandfather? No, no, not one of them. Uh, how, how old were you when you joined? How old I were was, you when you joined? I was Irish between eight, 18 and 19. 18 and 19? Yes. Uh, uh, now, there are, there are, of course, uh, several reasons why Irishmen uh, joined the army at that time. There were those whose uh, families were, as I mentioned before, traditionally associated with the army and there were those who felt it was their duty to go yeah. and there were those who joined and were encouraged to do so by John Redmond sincerely believing that they were fighting for the freedom of small nations yes. and believing that uh, at the war's end if the Allies were successful mm. that Ireland would achieve independence mm. and of course there were those who joined for economic reasons yes. uh, in Ireland there was a good bit of unemployment at that time there was a good how, about your, how about down your country? well uh, it wasn't too bad out in the country, it wasn't about in the towns, it was bad enough, you know. And, uh. You had Jim Larkin's strike. You had Jim Larkin's three, nine, mm. what was it, 19 or uh, 13 or something yes. like that. And, uh, but it didn't affect the. Uh, out in the country. It didn't it didn't didn't. No, I it was only the towns in Dublin that it affected, all right. And I often heard Martin Cunningham and Frank Gray talk about the uh, terrible conditions of the of the working class people in Dublin oh, so uh, during, to, during that time. They had to sell their furniture, they had to sell everything for the try and get a bit to eat. Yeah. And of course there were those who joined just for, for the heck of it. Oh, well, we joined for the heck of it too. <laughs> <laughs> Young fellas, you know, you like to see a little bit of life and uh, there was not many posters going around of father shaking hands with two sons, goodbye me lads, I wish I was young enough to go with you, you know, and all this. <laughs> And then a lot of the big firms give three quarters or a half pay to people that join up like the like Guinness's brewery now. Yes. They give half pay, I think, to the all the employees that joined up. Now there was the world of the OLRIC joined up yes. at that time. They all joined the Irish Guards the same as I did. And you were encouraged to join at that time? Oh, the guy you were by your employers, even the clergy. Yeah. Well now well, did you think that the war was was uh, going to end in a few months? Or uh, did you, and you felt possibly as a lot of young fellows uh, felt at that time that you you would miss the action and excitement if oh, you didn't get there in time. Oh, you didn't. Oh, I should have told you that. If you don't conduct yourself, you won't be allowed out at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, what happened? What happened before you went to France? What training did you get before well, you? Well, we to got France? six months training. You're supposed to be a trained soldier after six months, and. Uh, you're supposed to be a full-grown soldier after six months. Where were you? Where were you stationed? We were in stationed in Catherham, down in, in, in uh, Surrey. And after six months you were moved out into the trenches? No, we were six months we joined the battalion. The battalion went out on the 15th of August, 1915. What was it like in the trenches? You well, it was, fairly, it was fairly tough. Your first engagement? The uh, first what, well, the first, enga do the first, the first engagement we were sent up with rations. Yes. We were sent up with ammunition to the troops that was in the front line, you see, to give you a look and see what was like. It let you know what was coming. <laughs> let you know what was coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it, was it boring at times? Were you bored at well, times? Well, of course, you were young and we didn't give a damn. Were you afraid? We had no need to, weren't. 
We had no, no responsibility or anything, only for ourselves, you know. Did you never, did you never, were you never afraid of I was never things? afraid, I can say that. That's amazing, because I remember Jim Hurley telling me, you remember Jim, I think I did, I did, when I was in the Irish Guards. And Jim told me, I remember on one occasion, I said, were you ever afraid? He said, yes, I was afraid about ten times. Mm. And I said, when? He said, ten times every day. <laughs> you weren't afraid at all. I wasn't, because when you were Jane up, when you Jane up, especially the bars, and you, and you go to France or Belgium, you're not going out there for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> what was your equipment like? Oh, the equipment was, was uh, fairly good, you know, but it was, we had to carry everything you had. Yes. You could do a route march there, 15 or 16 miles, and you had to carry full pack oil. Uh, did you have to carry a, a pick or something to Oh, yeah, to had do some that, was the, that was a part of our equipment, and a trenching tool. It was yes. like a little pick, you know. On. Oh, it was very useful when it would be required, and you wouldn't be long digging in when the Germans start firing at you. Well, of course, the trenches were there, a lot of them were there oh, before lot you were trenches, there were lots of yes. But how did you dig in during the daytime, when, when you were under fire and that? Wasn't it rather, that was well, a hazard. Well, you had to do it. And once you got the head down, it didn't matter about your feet. <laughs> 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 once you got the head down. The, I was, uh, just one thing, uh, what was the food like? The food wasn't too good. There was, plenty of, there was plenty of food coming out, but it was getting blackguard. It sold by different crowds that had something to do with it, you see. Is that so? Black, black marketing? No, black, oh, black, well, no, there was someone made thousands of pounds. Thousands of pounds. But we all rations was uh, a quart of a loaf, a tin of bully beef, and four biscuits. And you might stick your teeth now in the table there. How about the, 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 the medics, the doctors and that? Were they all Well, we you? had a doctor. He was at headquarters. You went sick, you went down to see him. And I remember one fellow going down, and uh, he says to him, What's wrong with you? He says, I have no teeth. I can't eat the food. Oh, sissy, we don't want you to eat the Germans at all. All we want to do is to shoot them. <laughs> 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 How about the, the chaplains and that? Well, we, go, we had great chaplains. We had... Father Brown, the Jesuits, come up every day when the Germans be shelling and give us the general absolution. You go to confession then when you come out. That's it, you did come out. Did you pray often, John? Well, we used to were always praying. Whether it was good or bad, I couldn't tell, but we prayed anyway. Did you meet any, did you meet any fellows in the army who, who were atheists, who didn't believe in well, there was no, Well, there was no atheists there. No when atheists when in the, shell hole? No, when the Germans started shelling, I intended to all start praying. <laughs> 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 Uh, now, did you often wish that you were back in Ross Grave when you were? Well, I really didn't there? mind because I was young, you know. And I said, someday, someday we we'll get, someday we we'll get back. Uh, I want to ask you now about uh, one or two little incidents. Do you recall, for instance, the? Uh, did you ever hear the story of? Uh, the soccer game that took place on in, in no man's land in 1914, in, in the Christmas of 1914. Never heard tell of it. But the only thing I did, heard the only thing I did know is that uh, a party of the Scotch Guards got too much rum. What were they going? I don't know. At Christmas time. At Christmas time, and they went over halfway and met the Germans. And there was a terrible row over it with the, the high staff. And uh, what it done for us, we got no more rum in the trenches. You get no more room until you go out. You get a big Dixie of tea that time to be about oh, 12 or 14 gallons of tea in it, and they put in four gallons of room into it. And you get a drink of this, and you'll be heard snoring at Dunkirk. After <laughs> <laughs> getting this down. Yeah. Now, I want to, uh, I want to come to the, uh, the important part of, of this little interview. Mm. Uh, you've always been very, very, you've always been very, very slow. You've always been very, very reluctant mm. to talk about. Uh, the occasion and the circumstances which led to your winning the, the VC. Yeah. Uh, at, least, at least I could never get you talking about it. <laughs> I, I hope you'll talk about it today. <laughs> but uh, another thing, before we come on, you said that you didn't want to talk about uh, the blood and the killing and the slaughter of such places as the Somme oh, and Mons and Flanders and oh. that that uh, enough had been written and said about and that, said about about that you, yeah. and, and without you adding uh, mm. any more to it. Now, what, well, was, what was the occasion and what was the engagement which led, led you into the situation?
where you, you won your VC? Well, this was the third battle year, please. And uh, the Irish Guards had to relieve uh, the Grenadier Guards. And it took us about, we had to march about 15 miles, full pack order. It took us about two hours with shell fire to get in. And we had to cross the River Brombeck. And there was, you go over on two flanks. And uh, I was allotted two shell holes. For you, you were a sergeant? I was time. a sergeant at the time. I was allotted two shell holes for my men. So we're in the shell holes anyway, just before a uh, time for our, uh, the number two company was on my right, and before they had time to take off their packs, the Germans raided them and took the whole company prisoners. Yes. Uh, there was another company of Irish guards on the right, when they found the line broke, they returned back. The French was on my left, when they found the line broke, they returned back, and left me up in the corner. I was there for 96 hours, four days and five nights. So on either side of you, the French and your own battalion, uh, your own comrades had retired. I had retired, yes, to make thinking, a new life. Thinking that the, 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 the French the, had been taken. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're near, you were near the, the, the Bandak River at that time? Oh, the river was out, the river, yes. It was all barred wire and all. Such okay, such. you're there now the first day. The fir after the, the first day, what happened? By the way? Well, the first day we were there and... Uh, I sent out two men for to try, when nightfall came, I sent out two men to try and get communication with the battalion headquarters. But they never got there, nor I never saw them after. They were probably killed. Oh, they could have been killed. But we were there, we had to sleep in the day, or rest in the day. Uh, you couldn't put up your head. Uh, at night, we had to stand two. We had two loose guns and 12 dozen bombs. Now, I said to him. They were all saying, oh, this is terrible, will we ever get back? And some day, say, we'll be in Dublin, we'll have a good fight of Guinness. Yes. <laughs> to try you were keep, trying to keep the heart Trying up. to keep the old heart up, you know. You had no uh, food, water, or anything, Not though. at all. Not a thing? Not a thing, no. Saying you get that. And on the second day? On the second day, it was the same thing there. You sleep all day, you stand to all night. Now, I said to them, sooner or later, they're going to attack us. And I want everything ready. But I don't want no one to fire a, a bomb or a shot until I give the order. You know, a fellow, fire at nothing. There was nothing there, you know, fire yes. at some. So uh, we were ready anyway when they got the attack us on the fifth morning, at three o'clock in the morning. The fifth morning? The fifth but morning. The, 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 we were only at two days. Now, the third day was the same, the same no, operation. No, the same operation there. You were sleeping in the day and stand two at night. The, the Germans knew you were there? Oh, they knew were there, but they didn't know what strength you were. Your own battalion back behind you didn't know we you didn't know where they were. We were supposed to be captured along with number two company. Were they firing over you or at you? Uh, artillery was... We were getting shell put over your own or, or artillery and the German artillery. At the same time? At the same time. I see. So he attacked us at 3 o'clock on the 5th morning anyway. We let him come then about 25 yards and we gave him a shower of mills as bombs. They're a dangerous weapon. Yes. So we blew up a lot of money anyway. They returned back again, they attacked us the second time. We gave them the same thing. Well, this was going on for about an hour and a half, but our uh, ammunition was getting short. Yes. So I gave the lads the orders to retire to the canal bank, to the bank of the river, and I covered the retreat. But they got out. And when I went down, I had two bombs, one in each hand. The Germans was coming and cutting us off at both sides. And I let fly one at each side and I barked him. And I met a day when I got out. Yes. And at the same time, some man threw up the SOS for the artillery. Well, the artillery opened up for my good. The, the, the SOS, that was a. Uh, a SOS for the artillery. For the artillery. For your own artillery. For our own artillery. Yeah. Well, they opened up, my God, if I'm tonight stop. It was terrible. Well, that's, I think, what saved our life. The, the fact that they that they that they fired when you were when you were when that's you were right. We were just together. getting out. Yeah. Well, now you're being a little modest because I know uh, a little more about that <laughs> incident, and I know how you kept up the. the I know how you maintained morale yeah. in, the, in the trench in the four days, and I know also that you made sure that every single man under you was safely across the river while you were manning the machine guns and those two uh, dangerous bombs, the yes. that you told me about, the Mills bombs, and that you never moved until you made sure that your men were, in, that your men were safe. Oh, safe, 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 yeah. Well, now, 
John, when uh, when did you hear about the the decoration? Oh, about the two business? months. I didn't think I was getting a BC in the morning going to Australia tonight. <laughs> it never worried uh, you? No, not at all. You see, when you belong to the specialist the Irish Guards, you go and you're put into a position to hold it. Well, you hold that until you're fired out of it. Well, that's what happens. Because you can't retrieve it. There's no such thing as retrieve it. And uh, we stopped there and the Germans run us out of it. Yes. Uh, did you find did you find much difficulty in getting back to your own to, to your own battalion afterwards? Did you make contact with them immediately? Well, we were going around in the dark. It was just starting to break day a little, you know. And we were going around. We walked into a French battalion in the trenches, and uh, I remember a French officer taking me there with the neck, you know who I was or what I was or <laughs> what I was doing there and all like that. So he couldn't talk English. He couldn't talk English. But they had a, a chap, there was a runner between the Irish guards and uh, the French. He was there to talk English. So they brought him on and uh, he fixed me up. Took us over to the battalion anyway. And I remember the command officer gave me a, a mug. It wasn't a cup, a mug. Hmm. Um, black coffee and rum. And that <laughs> was the best relief I ever after five days. Welcome, welcoming you back. Welcome, yeah, welcome you back. Uh, the, the one thing I'd like to mention now, before I go on to talk about your your the presentation and your mm. investiture, uh, one thing I'd like to mention: uh, How did uh, 1916, the rising of 1916, what effect had it upon you and upon the the men? No, no effect at all. We when did you? How did you hear about well, it? Well, there was fellas on leave that time. When they came back, they told us all about it. That's yes. all. There was no broadcast or anything like that. And. Uh, I think they were very great, brave men. Anyone went out in 1916. Yes, but you didn't understand at that time. We didn't going understand what was going on until you came back. Until home. we came back home. I see. And as a matter of fact, afterwards, your uh, some of the the men who fought in the war with you came back afterwards. One of them, just one or two strikes uh, comes to my mind. Paddy Maloney, yeah. who fought in the war and who fought in the War of Independence yeah. and in the Civil War afterwards. Yeah. And they, they were neighbours of yours, and you, you lived together in Perth. We lived Perth. together, got on together, doesn't matter what you belong to, whether you were IRA or British Legion or what, we all got on well together, and that is the same today. Yeah. A brave man is a brave man, no matter, oh, no matter yeah. who he's fighting for. I remember, I, I forgot to tell you about this, 1915, well, Christmas Eve, it was snow in heaven's heart, and there was about two foot of snow on the ground. The Germans were about a hundred, a hundred yards away from us. They were singing, playing mouth organs and melodians, and they were shouting over, Mick, how would you like to go down William Street in Limerick? How would you like to go down Grafton Street in Dublin? No, we didn't wait them at all, you see. Of course, all these Germans, they were over here working in Ireland, you see. Oh, yes. And they all went back when the, uh, when the war broke out. When they were but uh, one fellow shouts out in the end, Mick, you see, get on your, get on your packs. Here's the coast streams coming in to relieve you. So the coast streams came in to relieve us, and we were down. They well, knew the coast streams came in? They did, they were coming in, yeah. The very few <laughs> things they didn't know. <laughs> and uh, we went back to a big farmhouse on Christmas Day. We had bully beef and biscuits, four biscuits and a, a quarter of bread, and a, a tin of bully beef. And of course, if you eat the bully beef, you ought to be near a river. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that was that, that, that was Christmas Day. That was the Christmas. That was your and the next thing, the Germans started shelling. They put six big shells into the yard and wounded seventy of ours, and we had to fly out of it in the middle of the day. There you go. <laughs> that was the Christmas dinner we had. Martha, sure, it's a good thing to be alive. Huh? That is true. Now, how yeah. about the investiture, Jack? When 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 did you receive the Victoria Cross? Well, uh, we were in the trenches, and the next thing I got word, I was to go to London, and I went to London. And I went before old King George, and he gave me the Victoria Cross. And I went on a week's leave, and back into the trenches again. Carried on the same as usual. How much leave? To, how much time? Oh, did you, yeah. get? you get six days from the time you landed at, at uh, in England. You get six days leave from the time you start from London. I see. It's going to be two days gone before you know what you mean. You'll be just coming home and turning and going back again. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And you got the Victoria Cross at, uh, during, during the, six, right. the six days leave. Yeah. Uh, and, and straight back into the trenches back again. Back straight into the trenches and carried on the good work. They didn't give you an increase in pay or They did lay like hell. <laughs> I would pay that time was three and sixpence one week and four and sixpence another. Why, but why did it vary? Uh -huh. Why did it vary? Well, do make Depending on the amount of retreating or advancing. <laughs> <it. laughs> they were making up about seven shillings a week or something like that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. Now, what do you think of it, now that it's all over, that, that war was supposed to be... That was supposed what the to be the end of said. all the wars. Yes. That's all the wars. But it never started right until that finished. Did you honestly think that, at, at that time, that that would be the last be war? the last war. Everyone taught that. And were you very, uh, were you very disappointed? First of all, when you came back home and saw, uh, found, first of all, that the War of Independence was going on here. Oh, yes. Then when the Civil War the came into the Civil country, War, yeah. That, you must have been a bit disappointed to, to find out that when you came back oh, home. Oh, well, we were all disappointed to see what was going on. We thought that once the war finished in France, that everything was finished, and that yes. was that. But you never thought there would be a European oh, no. encounter again? Oh, no. Yes. Now, the next thing Hitler started. Now, just would you do it? Would you do it all over again, Jack? If, if looking uh, back at it all, would I you would, if it I, but I'd led a different life. You know, I, I, I wouldn't. I'd be a lot better than what I was. In what, in what way, Jack? Well, uh, I'd lead a better life, you know, and uh, I might imagine that I'd make a better soldier and all like that. Ah, uh, you were a very good soldier. Um, no. We're, we're now, we've now reached a stage when you've come out of the... When you've come out, we, the, the, we were talking about the, the part of your life where you've come out of the army and you're coming back home. You came back home again. What well did no, you do when you came well back no, home? Well, no, first of all, well, we, we came out of the trenches about three weeks before... They took out the Guards Division about three weeks before the war finished. And they took us down to a place called Lee Threeport in the south of France. We used to get into the sea there every day and uh, they gave us plenty of food and we started the army of occupation. We started, the Guards Division started from where the war started, at the village of Mons, and we marched 150 miles into Cologne in Germany. Two days march and one day's rest. I see. And we got in there, we were there for three months, and they brought home the Guards Division. They were going into peacetime uniform, then they said it's time to get out, Jack. <laughs> 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 they had enough of it. <laughs> Well, what you, 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 you came back I came home? home then, I was only a few months, I had an application. I was, uh, a crowd that I worked with wanted me to go into Guinness. I said, well, I suppose if I went to Guinness, I'd be dead now. <laughs> 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 but uh, I joined the railway anyway, 1990 and The Great Southern. The Great GS and the Blue War. Yes, Great and Southern and Western Russia. Railway. Yes. 1919. I came here in June 1919, and I finished up in 1960. In the meantime... You got married? I got married, and the next thing, uh, I had a priest out from Limerick, and we started a branch of the St. Joseph's Young Priest Society. I was just going to start that. Now, would you go and tell about it? We started a branch of the St. Joseph's Young Priest Society. So I started out, it used to be a sixpence a month that time. Six and one, but I started off, I used to make a pay more. Uh, i done 40 years at that, the railway, and do the town as well and country. Okay. And I collected over 7,000 pounds for the ordination of young priests. In, in that period? In that period. That was my period. So I was... got to all then. I got arthritis in my hip. I had to go in for an operation. They took out my hip and gave me a new one, and I'm on the road again. Yes, are you still collecting for it? Oh, no, no. Somebody, oh, no. somebody else is going I handed over to a fella. He wouldn't get any, he wouldn't give money. He <laughs> wouldn't give money, money. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, it's been a pleasure, it's been a pleasure uh, talking, ta talking, well, uh, sure, talking about, about the war to you today. Yes. A ple and I'm delighted and I'm very honoured that you, that you, mm. uh, that you came to talk about your, um, your winning the VC mm. because in actual fact I found on several occasions that I couldn't, I couldn't get you to discuss the, the winning of it because mm. I always found you a very modest man. Mm. And no, thank no, you very we, much. We could stay talking for the rest of the day about it. <laughs> we could indeed. Yes. 
Well, it's been a pleasure, Jack. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, well, it's great to be able to come And, and uh, thank you, Pat, for having, for having us mm. on the program. And at this stage, I would like to thank also the uh, Junior Chamber, if I may, as I'm finishing up now, and Paddy O'Brien and his staff, who have been so kind to us here, and the presenters who invited me on to their program, and um, Kathleen Fairbrother and Georgie Cunningham and Michael Madden and yourself, Pat. Thank you very much. Well, Christy, if I may come in here, I would like to say that you shouldn't be thanking us, we should be thanking you. And, uh, Jack, thank you very much. I, I, I certainly wouldn't have been able to ask any question like Christy there. And uh, I, I, can, I guarantee you that outside on the street it's not like what it was in the trenches. <laughs> it might be wet at times, but that's about all. <laughs>